يودا كلم يونيتي تي في مريا تشكين نزري Hello and welcome to News Hour on UNT TV. Today is Monday, 34th of July 2023, and it's equivalent to 13th of Muharram 1445 after Hedera. The headlines. On cover CBN and NPCL Mayor's Economies Group Stealth Tenable Special Investigator. OPSH hands over RPG 7 AK 47, then guns, pistols, others recovered in Plateau to NCCSALW. No court order stopping us from peaceful protest, NLC tells federal government. ISWAP holds mass barrier for schools of terrorists killed in Borno. And on the forums in Niger, coup plotters dismiss Ecuador's threat, Bazoom reinstatement. And in sports, Nigeria battle Ireland with history on the horizon. And those were the headlines and for details and more of the stories. I am Rukayet Sani Ibrahim. Economists and civil society organizations have backed the appointment of a special investigator to probe the Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited, and other government business entities by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The experts and groups in separate interviews with newsmen on Sunday said the investigation was necessary to ascertain if there were any infractions or alleged abuse of office by the suspended CBN governor Godwin Emefele and other top government officials. Their comments came on the heels of Tinubu's appointment of the former chief executive officer of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Jim Obaze, a special investigator to probe the CBN and NPCL and other government business entities. In a letter cited by newsmen on Sunday, Tinubu directed a special investigator to work with security and anti-corruption agencies to provide a comprehensive report on public wealth currently in the hands of corrupt individuals and establishments, whether private or public. According to the letter, the appointment takes immediate effect and the investigator is to report directly to the president on a weekly basis. Findings by newsmen revealed that other GBEs, the probe will cover include the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited and the FRCN. The Nigerian Labour Congress NLC has told the Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Justice, that there is no other, be it interim, interlocutory or perpetual, from either the National Industrial Court or any other court, restraining Nigerian workers from participating in peaceful rallies conveyed by aid. It also reminded the federal government through the Solicitor General that there is a subsisting judgment for the right to demonstrate the protest on matters of public concern was in the public interest which individuals must possess and exercise without impediment as long as no wrongful act was done. The Labour Central stated these via a letter from Falana Chambers to the Permanent Secretary, Solicitor General. The letter is coming on the heels of organized Labour's proposed protest for Wednesday, August 2, over the removal of subsidy on patrol, its attendant hardship on Nigerians and the inability of the government to roll out palliative to cushion the harsh effects of the stoppage of subsidy payments. OPSH hands over RPG-7 AK-47 Dane guns, pistols, others recovered in Plateau to NCCSALW Commander Operation Safe Heaven, OPSH Major General Abdul Salami Abubakar has handed over 130 small arms and light weapons recovered from bandits in Plateau State by troops to the center for the control of small arms and light weapons. The handing over ceremony held today, Monday, at OPSH headquarters in Jos, the Plateau State Capital. Major General Abdul Salami said his troops have maintained offensive posture, conducting several kinetic operations and striving into the hinterland to protect isolated communities in the conduct of ongoing operation. Noting that this has led to the huge recovery of illegal weapons, drugs, motorcycles, vehicles, as well as the rescue of kidnapped victims. So this morning, I have the honor to do the symbolic handing over of just one of the automatic weapons to you, while all the remaining ones are displayed here 
will be transferred to your custody. Thank you, sir. Details of this report will come in our subsequent bulletins. Senator Adese Ogulewe says Nyesom Wike's ministerial nomination is compensation for the ex rivers governor's role in President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's emergence. Wike, who led River State under the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, worked for Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the presidential poll, following a fallout with the leadership of his party. About two months after Tinubu was sworn in, the Nigerian leader sent a list of ministerial nominees to the Senate with Wike, who has not officially left the PDP, headlining it. While the move has stirred controversy with the PDP yet to decide on Wike's fate, Senator Ogulewe says the former governor deserves the nomination. According to him, Wike was not the only one that worked for the success of the APC in the presidential election. He says people like ex-governor Dae Umai, Dave Umahi and Nasser Arafai merit nominations based on their antecedents. Following the liquidation of scores of Boko Haram terrorists weakened by fighter jets of the Nigerian Air Force, the terrorist group yesterday conducted a mass burial in Mate, Borno State. Sources disclosed that the terrorists have converged on Jibularam and Kualara areas to coordinate attacks against the Nigerian military when the NAV jets deployed to engage the terrorists struck them several times. A counterinsurgency analyst, expert in the Lake Chad, Zagazola Makama, who confirmed the operation, told Iswap said Iswap terrorists held a mass funeral yesterday for terrorists neutralized by the NAV jets in the northeast of Marte. Makama said the terrorists were killed in a series of airstrikes executed by air components of Operation Hadunkai on July 29, 2023 at Jibularam and Kualaram. Troops of the Nigerian Army personnel from the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps and Tantita Security have uncovered an illegal oil refining site in Ugeli South in Delta State. The Director of Army Public Relations Brigadier General Onyema Nwachiko in a statement on Sunday said in a sustained effort to deny all tips freedom of action in the South-South Nigeria and protected the oil sector from economic sabotage. Troops of 181 amphibious battalion of the Nigerian Army operating in 6th Division area of responsibility in conjunction with operatives of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps as well as operatives of Tantita Security have uncovered a major illegal oil refining site at Uwahua, commencing Ugeli South Local Government Area of Delta State. Nwachku noted that the vigilant troops on storming the illegal refining site discovered 35 modular ovens used for illegal refining of crude oil, three fabricated reservoirs, 30 dug out reservoirs, and 75 galvanized pipes. The leader of the separatist indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, was on Sunday returned to the custody of the Department of State Services after being released on Sunday. To, on Saturday, I beg your pardon, to be attended by his personal physician. The Federal High Court in Abuja had on July 20 ordered the DSS to grant Kanu access to his personal physician, dismissing the DSS objection to the prayer. According to I Pope, Kanu is suspected to be suffering from an ear infection and needs surgery. Council for the IPOP leader Ifang Ejiofo told newsmen on Sunday that Kanu, who have been in detention since 2021, had access to his personal physicians and had been taken back into custody. The lawyer, however, declined further comments on his health conditions, among others. The Senate has described as misplaced a comment credited to a chieftain of the Labour Party, LP Professor Pat Utomi, on the decision of the Red Chamber to stop the planned increase in electricity tariffs, which led to the comment, let the poor breed. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Senator Yemi Adara Modu, APC Equity South, who announced the Upper Chamber's reaction in a statement yesterday in Abuja, said the Senate had unanimously shut down the planned tariff hike, noting that it will further increase the suffering of the masses. He explained that the Let the Poor Breed comment was made during plenary on July 26 by Senator Akintunde Abiodun as an additional prayer to a motion seeking to stop further increase in electricity tariff was adopted by the Senate. 
and on the forums in the Economic Commission of West African State Authority of Heads of State and Government on Sunday in Abuja issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Niger Republic military to release and reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum as a legitimate head of state and government of the landlocked state. But in a swift reaction, the Niger Pusit rejected the call and warned ECOWAS against military intervention. ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government held an extraordinary meeting on Sunday at the Azorok Presidential Villa Abuja to discuss the next line of action on the development in Niger Republic. Recognizing Bazoum as a legitimate president, president of the ECOWAS Commission, Omar Tauri, rehearsed its earlier resolution to explore all measures necessary to restore democratic governance in Niger. Newsman reported that members of the Nigerian Presidential Guard detained President Barzoum and later declared General Abdurrahmani Tichani as the nation's new leader. In his remarks, Nigeria's President Nigeria's President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, called for swift implementation of all resolutions of the bloc, demanding that the coup plotters surrender and return to their barracks. Sunday's meeting is at the behest of President Tunubu, who also held bilateral meetings with President Umaru Mbalo of Guinea-Bissau, President Idris Dabi of Chad, and the U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of African Affairs, Michel Held. Present were President Patrice Talon of Benin Republic, Alassane Kautara of Côte d'Ivoire, Adam Abaro of the Gambia and Nana Kufuado of Ghana, Umaru Mbalo of Guinea-Bissau, Maki Sal of Senegal and Faure Gnasingbe of Togo, Presidents of Cape Verde, Liberia, Niger and Sierra Leone were represented. Still in international news, at least 39 people were killed and dozens more wounded Sunday by a bomb blast at a political gathering of a radical Islamic party in northwest Pakistan. Officials said the blast targeted the Jamiat Ulema -e Islam party when more than 400 members and supporters gathered under a tent in the town of Kar near the border with Afghanistan. Provincial Governor Haji Gulam Ali confirmed the death toll to AFP. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but the local chapter of the Islamic State IS group has recently carried out attacks against JUIF. And in sports now, Jara is in the blink of making history as it takes on already Ulster Island in Brisbane Park today, Monday in the ongoing World Women Cup, while they need a point to advance to the next stage of the competition. Victory guarantees the Super Falcons top of Group B standings. If that happens, that will be the first time for Nigeria, who has played in all editions of the competition. Although there were issues with the payment of bonuses before the tournament, the Super Falcons have surprised many with their showing thus far. They drew with Canada before silencing co-host Australia in front of their home crowd. Rated lowest on the FIFA ranking, avoiding defeat against the Irish will get Nigeria to the knockout phase of the competition for the second consecutive time. Though the Super Falcons are soaring, the same cannot be said of their Irish foes who have lost their first two games on their maiden World Cup quest. They are, however, already to fight for pride and end the tournament on a high. And with the spot news, we've come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Unity Radio FM TV, respectively. You can also watch us live on the satellite decoder, Border Sat, which has been watched in about 38 countries of the world free. You can also watch us and stream us live on our YouTube channel at Unity FM TV. I am Rukayat Sani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our programs. Do have yourself a lovely day. Attention, it starts from the foundation. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs some love. You turn a blind eye and care nothing less. Say it's just business, all about the money. Mm -mm. You are so unbothered as long as they pay. Say it's just business, all about the money. Mm -mm. You know they're on a fast lane. But you've got
got business to run So you look away, you look away the other way It concerns me, it concerns you Ile kill love, ile kill dreams Ile land people for jail War against drug abuse